Nazi skinheads in Manhattan are beating up people for having anti-racist stickers because they're Nazis and they hate anti-racism because they're racists. Eh. Uh, this smells fishy. And have you ever noticed when journalists write about things you know a lot about, you go, wow, you guys aren't even close to the truth. That's what I thought when I saw this story. Uh, I thought, uh... Manhattan skinheads, first of all, doesn't make sense. Yes, there's skinheads in Manhattan, but neo-Nazis? So what you hate Asians, Jews, trannies, gays, blacks, you must be exhausted. You're going to get tendinitis within the first half block from your house. There's no such thing as Manhattan Nazis. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, they've always been skinheads in Manhattan, Cro-Mags, Youth Defense League, Agnostic Front, but these guys had Puerto Ricans and blacks going to their shows. You don't know what a skinhead is, you fucking dummies. Yes, they're patriotic, they're pretty right wing, but that's because they live in the East Village in the 80s where there's crime everywhere and welfare and food stamp abuse. They tend to get pretty right wing when they see what socialism does to a city, when they see what dumb gun laws do to a city. Anyway, I thought, yeah, this doesn't sound right. And you see this all the time, too. When they, like, they talk about Fred Perry's, our guys wear Fred Perry's, and they go, that's a skinhead shirt. Really? Hitler used toilet paper. That doesn't mean people who use toilet paper are Nazis. That's called guilt by association. Yes, some bad skinheads wore some Fred Perry's. So did mods. Look at this. Are these... Hate brands on the back. <laughs> Mike Skinner, the Kingsman. Shut up! Uh, you also see those with Lugan Press. I call it Nazi glasses, not C, where they look at the past, they look at everything with their Nazi glasses, and whatever seems like might have been a bar fight must be Nazis. That must be a Nazi shirt. Y you know the term Lugan Press? They go, it, it means lying press. It's a German word, it's a brilliant word, it's very handy. I use it all the time. And the press is recently going, yeah, that's a Nazi term. Why? Because Nazis used it? Yeah, they also used the word the. And A, and I'm sure when they were talking about boats, they said Das Boot. So I looked into this, and I tracked down the so-called neo-Nazis. And I said, hey, neo-Nazis. Uh, by the way, it's very hard to track these guys down. It takes hard work. And I'm not even a journalist, but I'm better at journalism than these journalists. And I said, uh, I finally got them. They wanted to meet me in person. And we had to go through this guy and that guy. And, you know, normal journalism work. I find the guys, you know, no pictures. They don't want to be on the record. They're not giving me the real names. They're called One Guy the Hobbit. And uh, the story is, from the lazy journalist, that neo-Nazis saw a sticker that said anti-fascism. And they went, hey, we're going to beat them up. And seven guys beat them up. They had brass knuckles and knives. This story flies. Brass knuckles in Manhattan, in most of America, is a huge deal. It's a felony just owning them. And you go, brass knuckles, huh? And he's waving a knife around. A gang of Nazi skinheads, huh? Isn't that a felony gang violence? Shouldn't that be a big deal? That's a hell of a police report coming up. And I talk to these guys, and they go, that's not even close to what happened. Here's what happened. We're having an oi night, a punk oi night at a bar. And that doesn't involve Nazi skinheads. And this crew called 211, no, journalists, it's not the 211 Aryan skinhead Nazi group in prison. It's a totally different 211. This 211 crew is named after a beer, and it goes back to the 90s, you morons. They're outside. Two guys having a cigarette, these Antifa kids come up and they start filming them to document them. These two kids, these brothers, these victims, are Columbia grad students, rich kids. So, once again, and by the way, I was one of these rich kids when I was this age, that's why I know what's going on. These rich Antifa kids go and start documenting the evil Nazi skinheads who are just guys. One of them, the guy I called the Hobbit, he looks like a homeless man. Like bald guy with a beard and a Carhartt jacket and work boots on. <laughs> this is your neo-Nazi. They go there, start filming them, and the two gentlemen who are being filmed go, we know what you're about, we know what that sticker means, and they, as they put it, tuned them up. Yes, they beat them up. Two on two. Normal fight. These little boys run away, run to the cops, and make up this story. And then the press, look at this picture. Look at how the press runs it. Does that look unusual to you? In Manhattan? That's because it's from Italy 
in the early 90s. It's just a stock photograph they've used. These guys, Antifa are a gang, a terrorist organization, just like BLM, who pick fights with people. They picked fights with the wrong guys and they got their asses kicked. The reason that you hear their story is they're rich and they can afford to be vocal. The blue collar dudes they're messing with are losing their jobs. They don't want to get framed. It's very expensive and it's literally too pricey for them to come out of the closet that they're not even in. Now, the reason I bring up all this is not because you care about skinheads, not that it's so important that we protect skinheads' rights. Skinhead lives matter. No. This is about, A, the myth of Nazis and how much paper and media we waste on this mythical KKK beast, and secondly, how totally and utterly useless these so-called journalists have become. The media no longer has any idea what they're doing. And if you want proof, Read the few times they write about something you know about. Hi folks, that was a Rebel Media short. I have my own show on Rebel Media called How's It Going? You gotta pay for that one. Check it out right here.